Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Show Tunes tutorial. Now today we're going to be creating another mounting system for our character. Now inside the original mounting system it was very complicated and required a lot of experience to be able to follow along with um, that specific scripting type of programming I guess you could call it. So I went ahead and created a very simplified version of this and you will have to modify it and be able to apply it inside your own way to your game but this will give you the general idea on where to start. So as you can see we have our character sitting here, we have our car sitting here. And all you need to do is press the E button and your character is going to move from where they are to the sitting position. And as you can see the animation for the character changed as well. Then I'm going to press E again and as you can see the character steps outside and gets back into their normal position. Now obviously I'm using just two different animations. If this was an actual game you'd have your own animation specifically designed for this but for a demo purpose this is what I'm going to be doing okay so for starters we're going to go ahead and just discuss the setup now the setup is very very basic all you're going to need to do is get a 3d model of any sort now I found this free car off of the asset store it's really really cool looking and I was like you know what might as well take it so we got this car here and we're going to just drag it over here now let's go ahead and get this car out of the way so we're going to grab this vehicle we're just going to move it away from the player and we're going to grab this one let's drop it right there let's try to make sure that it's lined up with the camera view okay perfect so the next thing we need to do is go over to this vehicle i'm going to go ahead and disable this vehicle script because that's what's controlling this and i'm going to select this uh car so we're going to open this up and you're going to see a couple different things there. I really don't care for all those things. But what we do need to do is we need to right click on here inside the hierarchy. And we're going to add some objects. So we're going to create an empty object. And we're going to rename this object. So you can come over here to the inspector or press F2. And we're going to call this the seat. Now obviously the seat needs to be where the seat is right here. So we're just going to line that up. We also want to make sure that the direction that the character is going to be facing is going to be the direction of the blue arrow. Now, it's been a while since I've actually hopped inside here, so I'm not going to be switching over to local transitions and all. Um, we'll just experiment along the way. So, I believe this is going to be a 90 degree turn on the Y axis, so I'm going to do 90 degree turn on the Y axis. Okay, so now since we have this lined up, okay, it's not exactly lined up. It's close, but not exactly. Roll in. I think it's perfect. It could be off by a little bit, but I think we'll go with that. All right, so we now have our character seat set up. We also need to create another empty game object, and this is going to be the exit point. So we're going to select our seat since it is just an empty game object, and we're going to press Control D. Then we're going to rename this one as Exit Point. So the exit point needs to be somewhere near where the character is going to be leaving the vehicle. So I'm going to drag this simply over here and I want to put it right on the ground next to the car. Now you can get it to as close as you want. You can in fact put it inside the air. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much but um, I'm going to leave it just a little bit off the ground like so. Okay, cool. So as you can see we now have an exit point and our seat set up. Let's go ahead and select our car again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to add a vehicle script to this. Now you won't have this script just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this up. And here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and just scroll in a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. And fade this out. Okay, cool. So inside the script, it is very basic. Um, like I said, you will have to modify this script to be able to fit your game. But all I did was simply cr create a public variable called player. Now, obviously, inside your game, your character is not going to be able to just walk into uh, or just be standing there and you press the E button and you zoom from one side of the map to the other. But what this is going to do is say, for instance, if we set up a trigger function on this character, we can basically set this as null um, to where if the character walks into this, then that transform becomes the player. Um, but that's, you know, for another time, that would probably sound like getting ahead of myself. Anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much just for the player transform. The next thing we want to do is we we'll want to create a public bool called vehicle active. This is going to determine if we are entering or exiting the vehicle. 
We also want to create a private boolean called is in transition, and this is going to basically decide whether or not we're actually going to be entering and moving, or if we're not moving. We also have a public transform called the seat point. Uh, this was the point right here, as you could see. Uh, we also have the sitting offset. So this is a vector 3, which allows us to be able to change the position of the character. So if I actually went over to this first vehicle and open this up right here, you're going to notice that we have a sitting offset of a negative 0.5. The reason for this is if I select my player, you're going to notice that the player's origin is at the feet, right? But the character is sitting exactly one unit higher. So basically right here, you're going to notice it's at a 0.6 high. But if we select our pillar woman, she's at 0, which means that now we need to adjust this character from the standing position to a sitting position, so half of that value. Uh, it sounds more complicated than it is. You know, you just have to experiment and test while um, in play mode. Uh, we have a public transform called exit point, and this allows us to be able to select this exit point right there. And we have a public float called transition speed. This is how fast we move from point A to point B. All right, inside of our void update function, we have a question that we're asking. We're going to be asking if our vehicle is active. So we're going to be saying, are we in the vehicle or are we not? And are we in transition? If we're in transition, it's not going to allow us to uh, do anything. But if we're not in transition, it will allow us to. So on the first point, we're going to basically exit the vehicle. So if we're in the vehicle, then we need to exit the vehicle, if that makes sense. Otherwise, so as you can see, this else if, if you're not inside the vehicle and you're in transition, then we're going to enter the vehicle. Now here's where all the magic happens. So if we press this button, so if input dot get key down, key code, Dot e. So if we press the E key on our keyboard, then we're going to set is in transition equal to true. This allows this to activate since this is inside the void update function. And of course our functions at the bottom, this seems all super complicated, but it really is not. So I basically set this up to where you guys could be able to follow along easily. So on the private void enter, we're going to have a disable components. So this is the first thing you want to be able to do to make sure that you don't have, say for instance, if you have a collider that is going to be getting in the way of your character being able to sit down. Um, this allows you to be able to disable these components. So we're going to be grabbing our player. We're going to be grabbing our capsule collider on our player. So it's going to be grabbing the player. We're going to be finding the capsule collider by getting it. And then we're going to check if it's enabled and we're going to make sure that it's equal to false. We're also going to get the rigid body, so we're going to find the rigid body right here. And we're going to set is use gravity equal to false. So all this is doing is basically removing the physics uh, capabilities of this object. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to move the object to the designated spot. Uh, this is very simple as well. We're going to take the player's position. We're going to lerp it using a vector from its current position, so right here, player.position, to the seat position plus the sitting offset position. So if you remember what I was talking about earlier with the offset right here, um, this offset is the sitting offset, so it determines where our character is going to be sitting at. And then we need to have a speed that we're going to be moving to, so that's our transition speed right there. We also want to make sure that the rotation of the character is facing the direction of the seat. And if you remember earlier when I changed the rotation of this on the y-axis, that's exactly why I did that. So we have the player rotation. We're going to slurp it. Now, the reason why we're slurping it versus lurping is slurping allows us to rotate the object. Lurping allows us to move the object. It's really complica complicated when you get into it, but it's just so simple when you describe it. Okay, so we have the player dot rotation. We're going to set it to the seat point dot rotation, and we're going to use the same speed as our transition speed. 
Next, we need to set the object's animation to sitting. For this, we're going to say player, so we're going to grab our player. We're going to get the component in children, so we're going to find the pillar woman right here. We're going to get its animator. And then we're going to set the bool as sitting to true. And we're going to get into the animator in a second. Well, not a literal second, but you get the gist. After that, we're going to reset, or we're going to check if we need to reset. And all this is is a simple question. If our player dot position is equal to our seat dot position plus our sitting offset, then is in tra transition is equal to false, and vehicle active is equal to true. So we're just reversing what we had set up. Now I'm just going to just briefly go over this right here because it's pretty much the same thing. All you're going to do is just move the objects to the designated exit point. I'm going to just scroll right through there. You're going to set the object animation to idle. And as you can see, we just reversed this. So sitting is now equal to false. We're going to also reset check. But instead of checking if we're at the sitting point, we're going to check if we're at the exit point. Then we're going to enable the component. So we're just going to reverse what we did up there, and we're going to set this equal to true and true. Like I said, it's very, very easy to follow. OK, so we're going to go back over into here, and we're going to go ahead and select our vehicle. Now we're going to grab our script. Actually, I already dropped it on there. OK, make sure to drop your vehicle script on there. And we're going to go ahead and set this up. So we're going to drag our player onto our player. We're going to make sure that vehicle active is equal to false. We're going to set our seat point, so we're going to drag that into our seat point. We're going to set the y axis to a negative 0.5. We're going to set our exit point right here, and we're going to leave our transition speed to the same. So now, if I press play, it's going to do this right here. So we're going to press E, it's going to move us to that point. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause this so I can see what's going on with our character because I want to be able to go into our scene view and see where our character is located at. Okay, so as you can see, our character is facing inside the wrong direction. So we're going to grab our seat and we're going to press 0 on here and we're going to go back over into our game view. We're going to hit E to go to our exit point and then press E again. Okay, so it's not actually activating, so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go to zero. Press play. And now, of course, let it load up. We're going to hit E. Okay, so now she is sitting us at the right spot. But whenever we press E again, it's not actually allowing us to enter the vehicle again, which is quite interesting. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. So our exit point, let's check where our exit point is. Okay, so our exit point seems to be interfering with our player's position. So let's see. Yes, our player position is like trying to hit the ground and it's just doing all these fun things. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. We're going to drag our exit point over a little bit. And as you can see, our character is not able to actually land on the exit point. So let's go ahead and drag that all the way to the ground. So we're going to set that to zero. There we go. So make sure that your character is able to hit that point. Otherwise, he's, they're not going to be able to reset. OK, so we're going to go back over here. And we need to change this uh, seat position. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change this back to zero. Go back over into game view. Hit E. OK, so our character is now sitting in a weird position. Uh, let's go over here. Okay. So it is a little bit high. So let's go ahead and drop it down a little bit. So we're going to go negative 0.25 and we'll go back over into our game view. Hit E again. Go back into our scene view. Okay, that is perfect. So now our character is actually sitting inside the car exactly where they need to be. So we're out and we're in and let's go ahead and realign this camera as well. I don't like it just sitting there. So I'm going to grab my main camera. We're going to align our view, go over to game objects, align this view, go back over into game view. We're going to hit E, we're inside the vehicle, we're going to hit E, we're outside the vehicle. All right, so it now works perfectly. We're able to get in the vehicle and out of the vehicle. 
Now, where we set up the animations for our character, we can also do the same thing for our car. I really don't have enough time to do that today, um, but it's pretty much there for you. Now, for your player, just make sure that you do select your animation or animator. You do have a um, animator controller, so if you don't, right-click, go over to Create Animator Controller. And once you have that, you're going to go into your animator controller window. Uh, you could just double-click your animator. From there, all you need to do is make sure that you do have a default position, which is our idle position, and we have our sitting animation. So to get these, all you need to do is find your animation and drag it into the graph. Now, as you can see, I only have two animations, so it makes it all work out so much easier than having to go look through all that sort of stuff. But all you need to do uh, to make this work is Make sure that you come over here to the parameters tab, press the plus key, go over to boolean, and just change the name to sitting. From there, you're going to right click on your first animation, make transition, and select your second animation. With that transition, you're going to make sure has exit time is off, and your sitting or your condition, you're going to press the plus key, and you're going to change this to whatever it needs to be. And from idle to sitting, you're going to set sitting is equal to true and then make the same transition back to idle and from this one you're just going to do the same thing has exit times off condition sitting but you're gonna make it equal to false so now whenever you actually press play we're gonna be on the opposite side of the car it's terrible but you gotta hit E we're inside the car we're gonna hit E we're outside the car perfect Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure that you leave a like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave those inside the comment section below. Uh, I will have to announce that I am soon going to be releasing a tutorial series about actually developing a game I've been working on. And it's going to be super fun, and I hope to see you guys inside that video. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.